Come on in, come on in, come on in. Let me know you are here. Happy Friday. Happy Friday, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Sip and Chill with Coach Reg. Excited to be here with you again. Um, I got to tell you, this has been a week. It's been a good week. Hope your week has been also. Hope you're enjoy looking forward to hopefully what will be a good weekend for you, whatever that may be, whatever you choose to do. Um, hi, not sure who you are. Say hello. Hey, Tanya, how you doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hey, Karan. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the lounge. Happy Friday to you both. Yeah, it's good to see you again, Tanya. It's been a little bit, so welcome back <laughs> for sure. Yeah, so I'm Coach Reg, relationship coach. Founder of Are You Coach, a relationship coaching platform geared toward helping individuals identify, participate, strengthen, and sustain healthy relationships. Hey, Kathy, how are you? How are you? My clients are high achieving professional women who've attained many of their goals, but may not yet have the interpersonal relationship that best complements her or adds value to her life and or serves her. And we coach around those things. And I coach women in particular around value and worth because when a woman is clear on her value and worth her decisions and choices will reflect it and let's be clear the same is true for men i do work with men i just don't market directly to men but they are definitely um can be my clients as well hey carol how you doing welcome hey joyce welcome 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 to the lounge happy friday to you all as you come on again some of you know me already some of you don't but for those of you who don't you can catch the replay, <laughs> but I am looking forward to hanging out with you and wanted to thank you for hanging out with me. Yeah, yeah. Now, I have to tell you, um, this topic is going to be, it, it touches a lot of people. And I have some disclaimers that I'm going to share with you in a little bit, but not just yet. I'll continue telling, me, telling you a little bit about me. So, I am also, in addition to the, being the founder of RU Coached, a relationship coaching platform, I'm also the founder of Sip and Chill, which is an interactive lounge where members learn to start, strengthen, and sustain healthy relationships, okay? So, now, hey, Carol, I think, uh, yeah, there you are, hey there. <laughs> I thought that was another Carol, I'm sorry, it's a couple of Carols in the group and I noticed the spelling was the same. So, yeah, um, I need to tell you, I am not a doctor, okay? Hey, Carol, there's the other one, how are you? <laughs> Listen, I am not a doctor. I'm not a psychotherapist. I'm not a psychiatrist. I am not a counselor, nor do I play one on TV, okay? I am a coach, and coaches work with people to help them move from where they are to where they say they want to be. It's an improvement proposition, okay? Coaches are not counselors. Coaches are not therapists. Coaching is not advice. Coaches, coaching is not my opinion. Coaching is not what I think you should do. If I were you, this is what, no, that is not what coaching is. And so again, I work with clients to help them by asking powerful questions to stimulate and compel thought that they can come to the best decisions for themselves. Okay. Hey, Carla, how are you? How are you? Happy Friday. Hey, Cree, happy Friday to you all. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for coming to hang out with me here in the lounge for a little bit. Um, I was just kind of disclaiming that this topic is, is, a, is a sensitive one. And I think that, um, and I want to be sure. Hey, Warren, what's up, buddy? Hey, Stephanie, Coach Stephanie, how are you? This is a sensitive topic, and I'm going to do my best. You know, you guys make me work, I got to tell you. So I, I put some work in this week, and I hope that it shows up in delivery. But I just wanted to share some things. And if you find yourself in this space, there is there are some options. I'm going to share those at the end as, as it relates to what you can do next if, in fact, you're in this situation or have been and not quite sure what to do next. Okay, so let's get to it. The narcissist and empath relationship. I think it's best that we kind of define what they are first before we get into the deep, the meat of it. So let's be clear. What is narcissism? Narcissism is actually a personality disorder, okay, that needs to be diagnosed by a credible physician, right, that can, can, can speak to what that person's challenge is and how to, how to help them through it. Hey, Coach A, how you, I mean, Dr. A, how you doing? <laughs> hey, Steph. 
again, again, welcome, welcome to you all. So narcissists have a very, an overly inflated um, opinion of themselves and self-importance, um, a deep need or excessive, uh, for excessive attention and admiration and they lack empathy for others, okay? Here's a deal, here's a thing. But really it's a facade because underneath that veneer of I'm it, everything revolves around me, is a fragile self-esteem that's vulnerable to the smallest criticism, okay? So again, some of you may be familiar with this. Um, I've learned about this as I did this research to share with you today. But again, if it's something that, that, that hits home or something you, you're dealing with or may have dealt with and not quite sure how to navigate beyond it, again, we can definitely uh, give you some assistance there as well and support. So, NPD, Narcissistic Personality Disorder, can cause problems in many areas of life, such as relationships, which is what we're going to focus on, uh, work, school, or even financial affairs. People with Narcissistic Personality Disorder may be generally unhappy or disappointed when they're not given special attention, uh, favors that they think that they deserve. They may find relationships unfulfilling and others may not enjoy being around them because they have to be the center of attention. Okay. Oh, one thing I think is important to note. This is kind of actually interesting to me. Uh, narcissism is actually, it, it, it exists in both men and women, but it is actually more prevalent in men. And I think the numbers are maybe six to 7% in total. Um, just in the pop in, in society, but that that bigger number, that bigger percentage, uh, is just more prevalent with men. Um, so yeah, let's talk about the empath. So who is an empath, right? So we got the narc we we understand that narcissism is a personality disorder. So let's talk about who is drawn to them. Who is an empath, right? An empath is someone who's highly aware of emotions of those around them to the point of feeling those emotions. Um, empaths see the world differently than others. They're keenly aware of pain points and what others may need emotionally, uh, literally to a fault, and, and, and sadly at their expense. Hey, Sharon, happy Friday to you. Welcome back to the lounge. Glad you are here. Um, so what I'd like to do now is kind of touch on um, a few of the signs and or symptoms of narcissistic behavior. So if you've seen it, and I'm not suggesting that you need to go diagnose anyone. Like what did I tell you? I'm not a doctor. That's not what this is. It's just me sharing some information that may, and my hope is that it's going to help guide you through a challenge you're in or not sure how to get out of or what have you, but it's going to be information that's going to add value. Okay. So let's, let's hit a few of the signs as it relates to relationships okay so narcissist persons who have this disorder or could have this disorder believe they are superior and only associate equal with I'm sorry associate with equally special people those that they perceive are that they monopolize conversation belittle or look down people look down on people that they perceive as inf inferior they will take advantage of others to get what they want They have an inability or, or unwillingness to recognize the needs of others. They lack empathy. The same thing that's drawn, that the same type of person, personality that's drawn to them, they don't do that. There's no reciprocity there, okay? They behave in arrogant or better than manners, right? Um, they come across as conceited, boastful, pretentious, um, yeah, there's, there's some things with this. But again, I want to I cover the symptoms and then I want to ask you a couple of questions, maybe just to kind of get a feel for where the audience is today on this, because maybe there's some things you can share that will assist the group as well. Because again, this is sharing it with the intent to assist people in navigating through their particular challenge or a situation that they're not quite sure. And again, we're going we're gonna to talk about how to help you with that as well, assist you, I'm sorry, with that as well. So here's the thing about narcissists, right? 
although they have those things going on in terms of they, how they see the world and how they expect the world to revolve around them, um, how they may be better than and they seek attention and everything is about them. Um, they have trouble handling anything, again, that's perceived as criticism. They can become impatient or angry when they don't receive special treatment, have significant interpersonal problems, and, and, feel, and easily feel slighted. They can react with rage or contempt and try to belittle the other person to make themselves appear superior. They have difficulty regulating emotions and behavior. And you see why this is necessary to be diagnosed by a physician, I mean a therapist, someone who's qualified to do this because this is not a lay challenge, right? This is not a lay person's challenge. You may see symptoms. And so again, if you see these kinds of things, encourage a person to seek therapist. Seek a therapist, seek professional assistance and help and support because this is a real thing and hopefully that person can hear you. So we're talking about relationships, right? What I want you to remember is this. Regardless of all the signs and symptoms that we talked about thus far with the narcissistic behavior or personality type, I want you to remember that these are unacceptable behaviors and do not promote nor facilitate a healthy, fulfilling relationship. It may sound simple, may sound like it's or seem like it's hidden in plain sight, but I want you to remember that because understand re relationships are not a logical endeavor, right? They're very much emotional and very much about matters of the heart, okay? And when you're dealing with matters of the heart, things aren't always as clear as they need to be. And I just want you to keep that in mind as we go through this. This is not a clinical thing. It's just me wanting to share with you what you need to pay attention to. We talked about the signs. And then we talked about what, the, what an empath is. Now, but let's spend a bit more time on an empath for a second. Okay? Hey, Patricia. Hey, Pam. How you doing? Welcome to the lounge. Happy you are both here. And happy Friday also. So, as an empath. You may be someone who becomes overwhelmed in intimate relationships. Persons who identify as empaths choose to remain single for that reason. Others who others learn other empaths, persons who identify as empaths, learn to adapt by seeking a partner who respects boundaries. Yeah, exactly. Hey Bernice, how you doing? Happy Friday and welcome, welcome, welcome back to the lounge. So it can be difficult, quite frankly, to comprehend that you may you may be in a relationship or may have been in a relationship with a narcissist. And the reason is, is because there's some blind spots, right? There are definitely some blind spots that you may have missed or you have that and is why I got by you. And you wouldn't have, you, it would have caused you to miss the fact that you were in a relationship or could have been considering being in a relationship with a person who has NPD, narcissistic personality disorder. Okay. Hey, Nikki, how you doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hey, Paulette, how you doing? Happy Friday to you. Welcome back to the lounge. Thank you for hanging out with us today. So I want to cover a couple of the blind spots, right? Um, but before I do that, let me, let me step back. Let me step back. Let me step back. And just please let me know in the chat, who is familiar with NPD and have you had any experience with it or exposure or been in relationships with someone and I'm asking you a series of questions because I just want to get an idea of who's listening in and what's going on and where you are with this, right? Nikki says, I guess that's your hand raised like, yes, you have. Okay, cool. And I'm just curious to know, you know, did you know, did you realize you were in a relationship with the narcissist initially? Or was it something you learned later and then you struggled to remove yourself? Because I'm going to talk to you a little, in a little bit about why that struggle was so real, if in fact that's your story. But yeah, please let me know kind of where you are, where you've been, and why this topic is something that concerns you or that you have you may have um, you may have felt drawn into. Because the reality is, it's toxicity. It absolutely is. It is as a toxic relationship is not good for you. Thank you, Carla. Yeah, yeah, and and that's and that's fair. And 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 so this is actually very good because I'm hoping that when we get into the remainder of the information that we're going to speak to something that I think will help you be more clear on 
on, on how to navigate this kind of space if you find yourself in it. Okay, Tanya. Okay, Paulette, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so let's continue. So everybody's here that's familiar. Okay, Carol says, I've been in this the past six years, didn't figure it out until last year when I got a chance, still struggling to pull away. Got you, got you, Cree. Got you, got you. Thank you all for sharing. I totally appreciate your, your transparency and, and I, that's my goal, to be as transparent, equally transparent with you. Um, I think I also have experienced some of this in my past, and did, but I didn't know what it was. I didn't know what I was seeing, right? Again, we have blind spots and we don't know what we don't know. Uh, Kathy says, I didn't realize, realize it until later. Now the relationship is now over. Okay, very good. Very good. Again, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. So blind spots. Blind spots are those things that we can't see, right? When we're driving, that's why they call blind spots, <laughs> right? So the first and the, and, and the first in the list, and it's, I think I have, uh, yeah, I have five for you. There are five. Tanya, my no meant I didn't realize it until well into the relationship. Oh, I got you. Yep, 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 yep. Yes, Karan, there is a difference between the disorder and the behaviors. And so what I'm speaking to is behaviors, not the disorder, because I'm not diagnosing anything. I'm just saying these are signs and symptoms to pay attention to that hopefully if you find yourself in that situation, it definitely can, um, you can, you can kind of pull back a little sooner because you're more aware, you're more prepared. Um, yes, it's again, it's an emotional space, but it's definitely something that um, you can, you can, you are definitely strong enough to remove yourself from, okay? With, with, with support, let me be clear. Kathy, I was dealing with more so a covert narcissist, one who's able to keep it undercover for many, right? Goes to church and all of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and so, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, wow, yes. The thing about narcissists is that they're extremely charismatic and they seem so engaging. And they, they, they seem to care about you. They seem to listen to you and pay attention to what matters to you. But the reality is it's a facade because the whole point of it is, is to draw you in. And some, do, some are overt and some are covert, like Kathy mentioned. So it's, it's just a matter really of, again, just, you know, if, if, if you, when you, I think what can happen is that we are, um, we can become all of us blinded by our own ambition, which makes it difficult, right? Um, and so, so because it feels good, it seems good, and, and you want to believe the best in people. That's why these things happen to us. And yes, the the behaviors and the signs and the symptoms, yes, they're they're there. My again, my contention is that you are my contention. My hope is that you are well prepared, that you are not just prepared, but you are aware of the signs and symptoms such that should you find yourself in something or it could be currently in something, you can recognize it. And you say, oh man, this is, this is, this is what this could be. Okay. Um, let's see. Quran was connected to some with the diagnosis and others with associated behaviors. It's destructive and exhausting. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Quran. It, it is. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's all those things because it's, it can be debilitating. Because when you give of yourself so much to someone, when you realize that it's not going to ever be reciprocated because it's never about you, you're in this for the purity of purpose with the person, but you're not receiving that in return. So yeah, absolutely exhausting. 100%. 100%. So again, blind spots. So according to the, th according to the therapist, <laughs> Paula says, Rome, when you see it, it's one of the hardest disorders to treat. Wow. If there are 10 symptoms, mine has 11. You know, it's funny, Carol, you say that. Um, according to the Mayo Clinic, I believe there were 11 in total. <laughs> so, so yeah, you're on that. At that time, I didn't know the clinical term, but I knew the behaviors within the relationship was always draining. It depleted my energy all the time. Wow, 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 wow. So this is home for a lot. This hits home for a lot of hearts um, for a lot of reasons, a lot of people in the group. And, and my heart goes out to you for having experienced it, but I hope that you're better. Um, and you're stronger, right? And you know that you deserve better than that. You've always deserved better than that. That was never okay. Um, wow, everyone's agreeing with exhausting. Yep. So blind spots, some things to, again, to keep in mind. That's why they call blind spots. 
that you just may not see, you may not know are there because they're subtle. They can be anyway, right? The first is sexual attraction. Yeah, that. The greater the physical attraction and sexual intensity, the easier it is to ignore the flags. Individuals who can see auras and maintain that sexual energy literally obfuscates the mental and emotional energy and is why lust is blind. Okay, Quran says many in faith communities have behaviors associated with communal narcissism. Wow. Yeah, you know what? As I listen to you all, uh, I'm sorry, as I read your comments, this thing has levels to it. And it shows up in, Denny, in different areas, not just, just in your regular relationships, but in, in, in larger um, spaces with more people. And again, if someone is charismatic, if they are in a position of leadership or they're people who, you know, they have a, a base, if you will, of fans or they think the world, excuse me, it is a, yeah, this, this is, this is a very real disorder. Okay. And so again, we're talking about in this sip and show things that I'm just, I want to share with you to pay attention to. We're going to cover blind spots. We talked about the signs and symptoms, and then we're going to cover some other things in a, in a little bit. And then I'm going to tell you what you can do if you need assistance in this space. Okay. So number two, seduction. Narcissists are workplace. Absolutely. Absolutely. Tanya. Narcissists are skilled manipulators. Some can be seductive and not just sexually. They may be adept listeners and communicators and allure you with flattery, self-disclosure, and vulnerability. Just the opposite of what you would expect because it seems legit, it seems sincere, it seems authentic. And this is why I have to encourage you. I need you to not just pay attention to what tickles your ear, but I really need you to pay attention to actions over a period of time, sustained behavior, consistent behavior, not I started this way and then I became this and this is what you're left with because by this time you're already drawn, drawn in, okay? Carla, um, I'm no way better now. It's a young 20 something, not a lot of relationships. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha, 100%. And that's the beauty of learning and not just having experiences, right? It's, 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 it's paying attention to what you learn so you can apply it successfully, implement it successfully in your life to avoid that nonsense again or that type of situation again. Good, good. Well done, Carla. Well done. Kathy, it's becoming more real each day because people are becoming more exposed. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, there's still a need to pay attention. And how is, and how is that exposure being handled, Right. You know, how is that, how is that, is that exposure being handled in private? Is it being, even if it's in public, is it even acknowledged? Or do people want to believe what they want to believe because that, that's what they want? Um, it does seem sincere and leaves you confused. Yeah, exactly. That's why it's so effective. That's why it's so effective. And that's why I need you to not just pay attention to what you're, what you're seeing and feeling. You got to let the benefit of time serve you. You have to let the benefit of time serve you. Not just in the, in the present, but to see if, it, and you got to guard your heart. And I, I'm not suggesting it's easy. I promise I'm not. But when you are prepared and when you are aware, you're stronger. You're more equipped. And that's all we're talking about is becoming more equipped to deal with things as they present should they present, right? Third, idealization. See, you talked about communal, I think Karan mentioned communal uh, narcissists, right? Um, often narcissists are very accomplished, successful, good-looking, powerful, multi-talented. Wait a minute. Oh, thank you, Karan. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it's it's easy to idolize, idolize them because they want you want to share in the benefits of their exceptionalism, especially if you feel inferior or you feel that they're 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 in a better place or they're they're, they're they've accomplished more. They are like, oh my god, that's if I could do that, 
right? The awe. Oh, I'm in awe. No, nah, no. Nah. Tanya, it affects your trust factor to continue the relationship. You're always in the aware of experience of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But see, here's the thing. I, and I listen, this, hmm, that is something that can be worked on. Because trust is real for a lot of people. And once trust is broken or trust, trust is, your trust has been betrayed, it's very difficult to return from that, especially with the person that, that betrayed your trust and your confidence, right? But here's the thing. We talked about transparency, so I'm going to share it with you, okay? So many of you know, if you've read my bio, I have been married and divorced twice. My children's mom, my first wife, made some choices that, let's just say, were more than hurtful, okay? But what I'm grateful for is that I didn't look at every woman, each woman after her, like her. Like, you just like her. No, because they're an individual. Every person I met after her, post her, is an individual. And so what we have to do and work hard to do, and quite frankly, purpose ourselves to do, is treat individuals based upon their merit. What am I talking about? Their actions, their actions, their actions, and their words for a sustained period of time, not just in the moment. Okay, one second. I think we got a comment. Hold on a second. Kathy says, sad part, I have a degree in psychology and was so angry with myself for even getting myself in this situation. My biggest challenge is now forgiving myself. You know what, Kathy, we can totally talk about that um, if you like. I mean, that's the type of support I provide. Forgiveness is real. You have to forgive yourself. See, if you were still in it, if you were still, um, if you stayed in that space, you do yourself a disservice because you deprive yourself of future fulfillment. We are not, our, our past is not a reflection of us. It's just something we experience. It certainly does not define our future and where we're headed. It's just something that happened. And so it's, if we don't forgive ourselves, we, we deprive the people that are for us from experiencing the best of us. And we deprive ourselves from experiencing the best of what life has to offer because we are hung up on something that we can't undo, we can't get a do-over, it's done. So at some point, we have to just accept it. And that's a choice. No one can make you do it. No one can force you. It happens when it happens, but it, it starts with how you think about things. Again, we can talk more about it offline. I'm going to share the link to connect with me if you'd like to talk about uh, scheduling a chemistry session to work through that. We're more than happy to do that with you. Okay, let's keep moving. So we talked about idolization, right? Those with low self-esteem can get drawn into it, such as codependence are more likely to idolize someone that they, they, I'm sorry, idolize someone they admire. They may be drawn to typical narcissist traits that they themselves lack, such as power, boldness. The downside to it is because you're so impressed with this person, the problem is you ignore what you should be paying attention to. The mere fact that they're self-consumed. You're so, you know, we can be so, enamored with the thing we see, or persons can become so enamored with what they see that they don't pay attention to the action, right? What did I say? It's not about just what they tell you in the moment. It's what they do for a sustained period of time. If you're not accustomed to doing that, if you're not accustomed to thinking that way, what we're talking about are new habits, because your old habits are keeping you stuck. How do you get new habits? You gotta change some things. How do you change some things? You contact a coach or a qualified professional to help you navigate that thing. Yeah, that's how you do it. Let's keep going. Number four, familiarity. If you had a, narciss if you had a narcissistic parent, being with a narcissist will feel familiar, like family. This attraction happens beneath the conscious and is often referred to as chemistry. You feel some kind of connection, like this inexplicable thing. It's like, I'm just drawn to this person. Whew. With personal therapy, again, this is outside of my lane. That's why I told you I have, I have relationships with other professionals in this space 
who can support you there, okay? If that's what you need, if you're in the throes of this and not quite sure how to navigate. Codependency. Hey, Robbie, how you doing? Welcome back to the lounge. Happy Friday to you. Thanks for hanging out with us again. Yeah, Karan, absolutely. 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 They can only hold the line for a short period for short periods of time. Codependency. Again, sadly, if low self-esteem is present or you are codependent, you may be unaware of your feelings, which can guide you. You may not feel entitled to res to respect and having your needs and wants met because you don't feel worthy. That's a self-esteem issue. All right. And again, that's what coaching support can help you navigate as well. Most codependents tend to accommodate and people please. Other people, a perfect fit for a narcissist, right? Because they need their ego stroked. They need to be told how wonderful they are. And empath, those persons who identify as empaths feel like they're perfectly, they're the perfect fit. I've met the person of my dreams. No, you haven't. No, you sure have not. I promise you haven't. Because if you leave that equation feeling less than, it's not fulfilling. That means it's not the person of your dreams. And I'm pretty sure your dream was to be, wasn't to be unfulfilled. I'm just saying. Just saying. This predisposition is stronger in early dating and when you're trying to make a good impression. Thus, you might overlook and rationalize feelings of discomfort and anxiety. This signal trouble like, oh, this don't feel good, but I don't want to rock the boat because I kind of like this. If something does bother you, you won't speak up and try to forget about it. Sweep it under the rug. It'll get better. It'll go away. It'll fix itself. No, it does not. Can I just tell you, like many of you have already kind of alluded to, the first step is acknowledging, acknowledging and being honest with yourself. That's the first thing. This isn't a blame. You got to be honest with you about where you are, not what you hope for, not what they told you. You have to take personal responsibility. Guess what that requires? Courage. Yeah, it does. And guess what? You're, you're more than enough and can be more than courageous if you choose to be. You just may need the support to make that happen. That's all. And it's available to you if you need it. How are we doing so far? We good? I got some more information for you. I want to make sure we track it. Hope this is helping. Okay, Kathy. Yes, I was so drawn and didn't know why. However, out of 48, I never got involved with anyone with such behaviors. This has been my first one. When I was with him, though, I was delusional. We know, Kathy, here's the thing. Sometimes it just takes one. <laughs> you know what I mean? We don't have to be repeat offenders. <laughs> you know what I mean? Especially if that experience was traumatic enough, painful enough. You know what? Listen, let's do it this way. <laughs> let's do it this way, right? We, we talk about, um, we, we t <laughs> so children, right? Let's take a little child, a little baby, a little person, Tyler, right? And say they're walking around in a kitchen and, and you tell them, hey, listen, don't go near that stove. Stove is hot. Stove will burn you, okay? Little Tyler's like, yeah, I got this. Yeah, the stove won't burn me. They go over there and they, they put their little hand somewhere near it and they get a little ting, like, ooh, that hurt. That experience will be indelibly etched in their minds, very likely. <laughs> you understand? And they don't need to go again to make sure that what they felt the first time is what they really felt. It just takes the one. Does that make sense? So again, it doesn't have to be multiple occasions or occurrences it just needs to be one to get your attention because that's maybe what all you needed to guide you to where you need to be ultimately again we're talking about pre being prepared and aware so you can avoid and remove as necessary does that make sense hey janice how you doing welcome to the lounge yeah Okay, so how are we doing? I haven't seen any thumbs up. I just need something just to let me know you're there. 
I mean, I can see some of your, your faces and images. Okay, Quran. Um, okay, Kathy, cool, cool, cool. That's not how covert or overt is defined in this context of narcissism. Think of it as time between disconnects and explosions episodes. Uh, okay. 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 Um, okay. Quran, I'm not certain. Um, oh, but okay, you were answering someone else. I may have missed a conversation, so that may, be not, may, may not have been for me, so I apologize. Uh, thought that was thought that was mine. Okay, so we talked about blind spots, right? Now, let's get to red flags. Yeah. There's some flags that you want to pay attention to when you see or believe you're seeing narcissistic behavior. Okay. Um, first, self-centeredness, self-centeredness. Again, the world revolves around them. Um, when you talk to your, and then dating, right? When you talk to your date or someone you're interested in getting to know, they only talk about themselves. As if the listener doesn't exist. It's a flag. It could be an indicator that if you become if you become involved with this person, you may feel invisible, unnoticed, not acknowledged, not considered, not regarded. Again, if you if if you were drawn in because it was familiar because of family. You could take it for granted because if you felt invent if you felt invisible in your family, this is normal, and you may not miss it. You may miss it. It's a flag, but you could, could it could get by you. It could be a blind spot, quite frankly. You could possibly feel validated by the attention you give as a good listener, but again, you'll be the only one listening. You'll not be listened to. I said it, I mentioned earlier, narcissists are skilled, skilled um, and adept and adroit um, communicators, right? So you have to pay attention. The, they may even mirror your interest in the beginning. Remember I said in the moment, they're going to make you feel like you are the best. They, they're going to be right here with you. Like, wow, really tell me more. And you may feel like, wow, thanks, Kathy. <laughs> There's way more, I promise. They may, you may feel like, wow, this is why it feels like Nirvana. Because here's somebody that gets me. They're into me. They care about what matters to me. No, they don't. Not necessarily. It's the moment. Allow the benefit of time to serve you. Avoid the seduction of being drawn in because it feels good, it sounds good, hits your ear just right. Yeah, it's an exercise in discipline and patience. Neither are easy, because why? We're human, we want stuff yesterday. Especially when we've been waiting on this person and that we think is for us. They were designed just for us. Not necessarily. Hold your horses, slow down there, cowboy. Cowgirl. <laughs> okay. Okay, Tanya. Yep, they all into you, get caught in your head, and then they gaslight you. That's funny. We're going to get into that in a bit. <laughs> Thank you for the foreshadowing, Tanya. I appreciate you. <laughs> all right. Um, so, when they make you feel like the king or queen, you know, man to a woman, woman to a man. Um... Thing to remember is that it's an act. It's short-lived. It is not sustainable and it's not long-lasting. And that's the part you have to pay attention to. That's why I said you gotta pay attention to actions, not just the moment. And the moment is not just a um, couple of months, okay? Let's be clear. Hold on a second. Crystal says they study you during love bombing 
to gain intel to use against you during the yeah yeah yep yeah, yep yeah, they sure do crystal they absolutely absolutely 100 percent okay thank you paulette flags are there if you know what you're looking for it doesn't take long for behaviors to manifest absolutely absolutely so here's some signs i want you to pay attention to or just remember okay um yeti <laughs> yeti do kathy <laughs> Yeah, you and Ty, you're, yeah, hey, you guys are kindred spirits in that space. So, again, you'll discover that they're not interested in getting to know more about you, your family, your problems, or your successes. That was all a facade, all a game, all to get you drawn in, to suck you in. This is why it's toxic, because it's only self-serving to them. And this is why it's a, pers a personality disorder. This is not normal. This isn't like, oh, this is how it should be. No, it's not. And please don't justify by saying, oh, love is always difficult. You know, anything worth having, you got to work for. You got to fight. No, you're fighting for the wrong thing. You will never win this because you're not supposed to. Okay, I'm going to stop. I mean, not really, but yeah, I'm going to stop that line. Okay, Carol, my work long and hard in this chase. Um, nine years before the mask came off completely. Wow. And you know, listen to me. Listen to me. When I say sustainable, and, and I'm not suggesting, let me be clear. I'm not saying that this is something that you pay attention to and you can avoid it because you know the signs and you know the blind spots, and you know the flags. That's not what I'm saying. Please don't hear that. What I'm saying to you is my heart's desire is that you are prepared and aware, cognizant, okay? So that when you see it, you're like, hmm. Raise that brow. Just pay attention. Just pay attention. Listen, if someone is not asking you about you and you're only asking about them, pay attention. Pay attention. I'm not saying you're not susceptible because you're paying attention. It can happen. This is not, this is not a 100% solution. It is to, to, to suggest that you could be better prepared to navigate the experiences of your life, particularly if you happen upon someone who could potentially be suffering from NPD. Hey, Sharon, how you doing? Welcome. Welcome back to the lounge. Hey, Robert, I think I think I saw you hop in too, sir. Welcome. Welcome to the lounge. Glad you are here. All right. We got a lot more to cover, guys. A lot more. Okay. Um, so kind of said this already. But these are just some signs. Um, lack of consideration. If you're out on a, on a date, they walk far ahead of you. You have to track them down to refer, return phone calls. They arrive late and don't even acknowledge it. Like, what's the big deal? Oh, one second. Dr. Hubbard says the difference. There's a difference between traits and the diagnosis of MPD. Some can have the traits, but not meet the criteria for MPD. Traits can take longer to manifest. Thank you, Dr. Hubert. Thank you. Thank you. I told you I got, I got therapists on the chat. They are right here in the lounge with us. Thank you for that, Dr. Paulette. Appreciate you. Wish I took a coaching session from you before entering into the... <laughs> yes, Reggie, we have to have a one-on-one. -on -one. Yes, Kathy, I got you. Again, I'm going to give you that link at the end. I can tell you now, but it's, it's uh, bit.ly coach red session i'm going to drop it in the, at the end of this video it'll be out there for you so you can absolutely hit that and, and schedule with me as soon as you are ready all right so a couple of things um you out on a date they're inconsiderate right they don't um they take phone calls right um interrupt conversations that you may be having. Say you had to take a phone call for whatever reason. You said, excuse me, it's important. I'm expect and you manage the expectation. You may have told them that, hey, you know, um, I need to take this call, blah, blah, blah. This is, this is important. And you told them not because you wanted to be rude, because you're like, hey, listen, I want you to know this. This could happen and the call could come while we're together. That's you being considerate and respectful of the time that you share. But that is not returned in kind. Pay attention. Again, we're talking about signs. Thank you, Karan. Thank you for that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, again, we're talking about the flags. The next one, excuse me, 
The next one is arrogance. Narcissists feel superior to other people and can be rude or abusive when, when they don't get what they want. Is your date, again, relationships, is your date a fault finder, someone who criticizes or blames others, the opposite sex or an ex? Listen, pay attention to that. You know why? Because one day you could be that person he's bashing or she could, she's bashing. Just pay attention. That's all I'm asking you to do. Not, listen, like I said, I can't stress enough. We cannot avoid this in total. My hope is that you are prepared and aware such that you can mitigate the likelihood of being sucked into this kind of a thing again. That's, that's what we're saying. That's, 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 that's exactly what we're saying. And I hope that's clear. Uh, so, next, entitlement. Now, this trait reveals how narcissists think that they are in the center of the universe, <laughs> okay? They not only believe they're special and superior to others, but they deserve the special treatment that rule and rules don't apply to them. Does your date refuse to turn off of his or her phone in the cell phone? I mean, I'm sorry. Your date, does your date refuse to turn off their phone when you're sharing time? If you're out in public or what have you, you know, unless absent of an emergency. Um, do they expect others to do favors for them? They insist on special treatment from waiters, wait staff, waitresses. When you're out and about, it's like, well, I'm here. You should do this and blah, blah. This is, this is ridiculous. And you know it's ridiculous. And quite frankly, you probably feel embarrassed. As an empath, you're like, oh my God, you know, it cannot be comfortable. It can't be comfortable because you're like, that's just outside of the bounds. But somehow it gets dismissed because you may be enamored with the other stuff we talked about because of your perceived, your perceived greatness of them. Hey, Lisa, hey, Deani, how you doing? Welcome to the lounge. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So this is why I need you to pay attention to this because it shows up in different spots. And you got to know what the flags are and the blind spots are that you may have in this space, which may cause you to miss what you got to pay attention to. Okay. When I saw this one, I was like, my gosh, this is crazy, but I could see it. Man to a woman. If you're a woman, does he expect you to drive to his neighborhood? <laughs> a relationship with a person like this is going to be painfully one-sided. Not, not mutually beneficial. Um, okay, Tanya, they are typically good lovers as well. That can blind you. Absolutely seductive. Yes, all true. That, that's the whole point. That chem, that energy. That's like, oh my God, is something? Here. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Mine did not expect. Mine, I did not expect. I enjoy my own birthday celebrations. If attention wasn't sent. Wow. Wow, Carol, I'm go listen, I I'm sorry it took nine years, but I'm so thankful you're out of it. My goodness. And again, a lot of these things are hidden in plain sight. We just have to be courageous enough to, to acknowledge them, to notice them, and to be honest with ourselves about what we're saying. And then be courageous enough to take action. What does that action look like? Y'all heard it a thousand times from me. You got to love you more. That's my battle cry. I want you to love you more. Loving you more requires courage. It requires doing what's uncomfortable. It requires removing yourself. And we're going to get to all that in a bit, but I just had to say that right now because it just seemed to fit. I just want you to love you more. Number four, bragging and need for admiration. Another example of manifested insecurity with narcissists. They want to believe they're superior and best, they need constant validation, appreciation, and recognition. And they seek it out. What does that mean, Coach Roger? What I'm sorry, Tanya, what does what mean? I, I'm sorry. What does what mean? Loving you more? Or something else? Okay, Tanya, I'll come back to it. Just please let me know what you are asking. I want to. I don't want to misunderstand what it is. Um, Kathy, excruciatingly one-sided. 
They give you the sad sob story to love you more. Okay, got it. I'll come back to it. Um, sad sob story. Feel sorry for them. And the next thing you know, you're giving me a person. <laughs> right. So again, you now know that. Like I said, Kathy, you only need it one time. It just took the once. It did. You didn't have to repeat that. If I heard, you, if I saw your note correctly, you had that experience once. You haven't repeated it. So, so, so yes, it can be that. Especially if you're someone who cares for others and believe they're sincere because they have baited you, they have sucked you in, they've drawn you in with their lies. You recognized it was something that. And so, guess what? No is a complete sentence. It really is. No requires courage. I get that it's uncomfortable, but boundaries are necessary. And again, we're going to get to that too. All right? I hate to break it to you, but we're going to be here a little bit longer than an hour tonight because, um, <laughs> yeah, I got still more information to share with you. All right. Um, yes, Diani, the short answer is yes. You totally can be. Um, you totally can be blindsided. You sure can. Tanya, back to your question. What does it mean to love you more? Loving you more simply means you make decisions that positively impact your life. You consider you. You regard you. You remember to consider you when you're making decisions. It doesn't mean that you become selfish, but that's sometimes okay. And so in this instance, in the context that we're referring to right now, narcissist and empath, loving you more means I love myself enough to get myself out of this or get the support I need to remove myself to, and the courage to develop the courage and the strength to remove myself because it's a value proposition. I'm continuing to chase something and want something that doesn't want me. And it's not easy, but it first starts with recognizing and acknowledging that there is a challenge and the challenge I can, you can't overcome yourself. You need support and you need to be reminded and encouraged and championed that you matter and you are enough and you deserve more than that. That's what loving you more means in short order. Hope I answered your question. And I wasn't yelling, I promise. I get passionate, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just am. But yeah, that's what that means. All right, uh, wow. Okay, Quran. it's not just romantic relationships, parents and other loved ones. Yes, that's correct. That's, that's true, Quran. absolutely. Self-care, not selfish. Thank you, Paulette. I could not agree. Yes. Mic drop. Self-care, 100%. All right. Let's keep moving. Number five. We're talking about flags. Control and manipulation. Narcissists, we've been talking about it. They put their needs first. So whatever makes them work, whatever works for them, that's what they are. They're, they're here for it. If it's for, if it's about them, for them, around them, psh, sign them up. Again, they manipulate you with flattery. They're belittling, and they may threaten you. Their lack of empathy may show when planning a date. Time and place to time and place might be a difficult negotiation, or on their terms, especially if they think they got you. And you're interested in them. Initially, they may want to please you and win you over. But once they've made the catch, once they got you in the web, if they're a spider, guess what? <clears throat> they lose interest. I think Kathy said a minute ago, once they get what they want, they drop you. But Kathy says, I'm real selfish at this point. And the more I drink this wine, the more... <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Kathy? I dig that. I dig that. You know why? Because we can laugh at ourselves. And, and you know, my mom used to say to me when I was going through my stuff back in the day, many, many years ago, she says, Raj, the day's going to come where you're going to laugh at some of this stuff. And I was like, at the time, I couldn't hear her. I was like, you got to be kidding me because it hurt too bad. But guess what? She was all right. And so I feel you on that. One thousand percent. I really, <laughs> really, really do. Because we, it's, it's healthy to laugh at ourselves. Because it suggests that we're human and we don't have to be perfect. We get it wrong and it's okay. We make mistakes. It makes us relatable too. Who wants to talk to anybody who got it all right all the time? No. Every one of us to a person is flawed and fallible. 
And regardless of our flaws and fallibility, we still need each other. Yeah, we do. Because we can uplift, build, encourage, and edify. Anyway, let's keep going. All right. Here's what I want you to remember. Pay attention. Listen to what your dates say about themselves and past relationships. That's, there's, a, there's a tip right there. Ensure that they are sharing. Um, hold one second. I feel that Kathy get me a good cigar and some whiskey. And <laughs> you guys are hilarious. I love it though. I love the interaction. Um, yeah. Pay attention to what your dates say about themselves. Now, you guys have heard me say in the past, I'm a huge advocate for design, right? Design works. With desi what does design give you in relationships? It, it, it assures you two things. It assures, hey, Laverne, how are you? Hey, Patrice, welcome. How you doing? <laughs> welcome back to the lounge. What does design give you? Or oh, better yet, ensure, better, I'm sorry, increases the likelihood of agreement and accountability. Okay? So that's why you design it. And so what I'm saying, what, how does that apply here? When you listen to your date and they share with you about their past relationships, or, and if that's if they are, so pay attention to ensure that that's what they're doing. And if they're not, ask questions. Because why is this important? Because you're you're gathering information. You're not writing a book. What you're doing is you're you're remembering what they told you. So any events you need to revisit it, you can. Now here's where this becomes problematic for empaths. If you have low self-esteem, you're likely less inclined to do that. Once again, coaching. Once again, courage. Once again, acknowledgement. Love you more. That's how all of this works. If you can grasp that, these other things become easier. Didn't I say easy? Easier. How we doing? Thumbs up. This is not making sense to me. I get it. I got questions. Let me know something. Pay attention to if your person admits to serious shortcomings, commitment issues, infidelity, criminality, addiction, or abuse. Equally important is to notice if you feel anxious or uncomfortable, controlled, ignored, or belittled. If you're having these feelings, be honest with yourself about them. There may be a flag. These are flags. These are things you want to pay attention to. Please don't ignore them. Please do not sweep them under the rug as if they don't exist. <laughs> Carol, <Oscar. laughs> good for you, Carol. Good for you. Good for you. Good for you. Now, I got some more. Well, we got more. Okay. Yeah. Here goes. Narcissists. Hold on a second. What immediate steps would you take to remove yourself from a narcissist, James? That's a great question. Um, I think the and I'm you know so so. I, I promise you, I'm going to get there. That's actually how I'm going to wrap this up. So I'm going to come back. I'm going to answer your question, but at the end. So thank you for that. Um, Quran, the impact thing is more often lack of boundaries, not deep intuitive living. Yeah, it, it is. Boundaries are important, but I think it's not just boundaries, Quran. I think it's a combination of things. I think there has to be some awareness. I think that courage has to be there. Loving you more has to be there for you to be courageous enough to even understand that boundaries are necessary. Because narcissists are damn near darn near predators, okay, and so you 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 really have to be strong enough as an individual and notice the things that we've talked about and be courageous enough to implement boundaries. So I do not disagree with you. I'm su I'm just suggesting that there's some foundational things that have to be there first before the boundaries can even be established. Is my is my is my opinion. Um, So here's what I'll talk to you about now. Those of you who've had this experience and done your own homework, you probably already know about this or heard of it. So I'm going to give it my shot as well. Narcissist, hold on. They are part of this coach. They don't respect them. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Narcissists and empaths can form trauma bonds. What's a trauma bond? 
Trauma bonding occurs when a narcissist repeats a cycle of abuse with the empath, which fuels the need for validation and love from the empath being abused. So they beat you down, you try harder, they beat you down some more, you try harder again. An empath who has been trauma bonded looks at themselves and what they need to do to change and what they need to do differently, what their character flaws are. It's all about what can I do to be better? That is not good. Don't do that especially when you're not being considered, regarded, respected, please assess your relationship. Be honest with yourself. It takes courage because I get that you may not like what you see. So you may not just be, you may just not be in a place emotionally, mentally to be willing to look in the mirror. requires courage. It's not you. It's not your fault. It's not your fault if someone doesn't regard you, respect you, consider you, but yet you reciprocate all those things to them, but you don't require it for yourself. That is an example of loving you less, not more. Paulette, if an empath has high self-esteem and boundaries, it repels. Ah, thank you, Dr. Paulette. 1,000, 1,000, yes, so very true. I, I, I absolutely agree, absolutely agree. So let me share with you some signs of trauma bonds. Constant pattern of non-performance. Your partner promise you thing, promises you things and keeps behaving to the contrary. These may sound familiar to those of you who have experienced this on some level or were in it and didn't know and you realize that hey, this sounds familiar. Others are disturbed by something that is said or done in your relationship, but you brush it off. Others are your family, your friends, people who care about you. And you're like, ah, oh, you dismiss it. Trauma bond. You keep having the same fights with your partner. They go round and round. No clear winner. First of all, you shouldn't be fighting. How about that? <laughs> you can respectfully disagree. You're punished or even given a silent treatment by your partner when you say something or do something wrong, according to them. You put in time out and you accept that. Trauma bond. You feel unable to detach from your relationship, even though you don't truly trust or even like the person you're in it with. Oh, hmm. that has to be tough. That's why this has to be dealt with, in, in, in my opinion, in, in phases and stages, right? Because if you've suffered from this or you've been involved with a narcissist, an empath relationship that was toxic, there may, be, there may be some foundational rebuilding that has to happen, which is why therapists like a Dr. Paulette and others a persons to seek out and once you become whole again and I'm going to get more into this in a bit then you can look at coaching but this is this is the, 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 there's steps to this this progression when you try to leave or try and leave you're plagued by such longing to get back with your partner you feel it might destroy you yeah so we've covered a lot. So say you're dating a narcissist. Now what? <laughs> so James, this will help answer your question, sir. At least I hope. Um, for empaths, we talked about boundaries. They can seem harsh, but once you are aware of the strength and power in saying no, they can protect you from people who are looking to take advantage of you. For empaths, boundaries may seem harsh, but they can protect you from persons who are trying to take advantage of you. So 
How do you prepare to exit? Number one, constantly remind yourself that you deserve better. Build a support network with friends and family who can help remind you of what is reality and not fantasy. If you choose to stay in this and you're in it right now, urge your partner to seek therapy. Here's a thought, you get a therapist, right? And once you work with a therapist and have built a solid foundation, schedule your chemistry session with Coach Reg <laughs> and learn how to identify, participate, strengthen, and sustain healthy relationships. Yeah, that's how you do it. You're welcome, James. You're welcome. So that's what I have for you. The floor is open for your comments, your questions, your thoughts. I appreciate your participation. And we are well over an hour. It's like each week it goes longer and longer. It's, it seems to be a thing. But I'm good with that because that means there's value here. <laughs> Narcissists don't show up with therapy. Hey, guess what? But you can. I said encourage. You can't control but what you can control is what you do. So you're absolutely right, Karan. They don't, and they may not. But my focus is less about what they may do and more about what you can do for you, whatever you feel is best for you. I do not disagree. Any questions? Thoughts? Okay, okay. Well, like I said, guys, I appreciate Get up on that couch. <laughs> I'm so grateful that you all chose to hang out with me for a bit on, on Friday evening. Um, yeah, the lounge is, is growing. And, and to all of you who were here, I appreciate you being here. It's been awesome. Um, hold one second. I see some comments. Carol, exactly what I've done. I have a therapist support system for calling a narcissist by its name. You had better be ready for a fight. Yeah. Wow. Glad he was just a boyfriend and not a husband. It was easier to get, yeah, for sure. Do two narcissists cancel each other? <laughs> oh, wow, Patrice, that's awesome, man. That's a beautiful day for that, too. My gosh, in the pool. I love it. You're very welcome. Yeah, um, that's a good question, Karan. Do they? Possibly. <laughs> hey, James, I'm glad you're here, sir. Appreciate you being here, man, and I hope, it, I hope you found some value in it, for sure. So, yeah. Uh, Karan, type the link in of how you, how you can contact me to schedule your chemistry session. Bit.ly Coach Reg session. We still have a couple of slots remaining. It's only three right now. And uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, there are three. I'm sorry. I thought one. Yeah, there are three. So if you want to grab one of those, at least talk about securing one of those, please go to bit.ly Coach Reg session so that you can schedule your chemistry, your no obligation chemistry session to see if are you coached can support you with your relationship coaching needs. Pretty sure we can, but yeah. Um, thank you, Karan. Let's see, Carol says, so needed to be a part of this, Coach Raj. I was traveling, pulled over, first time. Wow, how cool is that? Thank you, Carol. <laughs> thank you, Carol. I appreciate that, that is, that is wonderful. And thank you for doing so safely. You know what I mean? That was very smart. So glad you chose safe. See, Part of loving you more is choosing you and saying, yes, I want to do, I want to participate. I want to be here for this, but I need to make sure I'm in a safe space to do so. Good for you. See how that's what, that's a thoughtful person. Yeah. Keep doing that. Keep doing that. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. See, did I miss anything? Um, hold oh, one second. Kathy, you need to do a part two for healing. We'll talk about it, Kathy. <laughs> I think I dated a narcissist and didn't know it until now. Glad that thing is over. Hey, Carol, I'm glad you're out of it too. See, and that's the thing. It's like we don't know until we know. And now many of us are more prepared. I'm more prepared after having done the research to even have this discussion with you, right? Doesn't mean I can avoid it. Doesn't mean any of us can. Doesn't, mean, doesn't make us less susceptible. It just makes us more prepared and aware. Yeah. Maybe it does make us a little bit less susceptible. <laughs> but it makes us more prepared and aware. Uh, let's see. Yay, Tanya, thank you for hanging out with us. Glad you were here, glad you enjoyed it. So listen, we're gonna wrap it up. Um, 
Great hanging out with you. Have a great, safe, and enjoyable weekend. And whatever you choose to do, please do so safely. Uh, if you gather socially, do so safely. Okay? And um, we'll see you next time. I'm Coach Reg, and I love love. I'll see you soon. Take good care.